So we've all heard of the Adventure Token package by now. What started off as a strange isekai deck that people made fun of for potentially being worse than War Rocks, suddenly got people's attention with Water Enchantress of the Sanctuary, suddenly turning it from an awful deck into a decent engine. Just like our golden boy Alistair the Invoker, at the cost of your normal summon, you'll get a very splashable negate. Except, unlike with Alistair, you're actually sacrificing your normal summon monster's effects rather than the normal summon itself. So basically, a whole new generation of rogue decks get to sacrifice their pathetic, unimportant normal summons for something that's better than they would have been able to do with it anyway. Which in this case is making an Omni Negate Griffin. And hey, all it will cost you is. oh my god. Well, at least there's Master Duels. While decks that are already decent, like Prank Kids and Phantom Knights, will probably benefit from this the most, we also need to reevaluate a bunch of decks that, let's just say, struggle a bit when it comes to dealing with massive foreheads. As long as they don't need the effects on the field of their normal summon, you can just throw this package into the deck to give them protection during your turn, and say so which, and I'm being generous when I say this, underperforming deck will be getting the Yusukai treatment today. Well, as a deck almost renowned for losing to Ash Blossom, as I know all too well from experience, Witchcrafters fit that bill. They'll take anything to make it so that you don't actually need to fear starting your combo. But wait, I hear you say. How will you summon Vech without using your low-level Witchcrafters effects after normal summoning them? Well, the simple answer is that you don't. You don't actually need to, that is. You see, they're quick effects, so you can just wait until next turn, and just use their effects then. It's honestly just not much of a problem. You can also just get around it by using something like Witchcraft or Holiday or Unveiling to summon your Witchcrafters anyway. While it may sound like the waste of a card, the Adventurer package actually has some pretty good synergy with Witchcrafters' consistent need for spell cards. You see, as part of the combo, you end up getting an additional equip card that will not only fuel your discards but also equip itself to your token, giving it protection. Still not sold on the synergy? Well, the token line requires a discard during it. This is a great time to get rid of low-level witchcrafters for their graveyard effects, or even just getting rid of any of the many spells with graveyard effects. Stuff like Magician's Rest Age and Metal Phase Fusion are great for this, but also any Witchcrafter spell that you discard will just end up adding itself back to your hand, as long as you have any Witchcrafter on the field at the end of the turn. So which cards will you be adding to a Witchcrafter deck? Well first off, Right of Aramesir and Water Enchantress of the Temple are your starters. Right is the one that actually summons the token, while playing a Fateful Adventure so that you can search a Gryphon. Water Enchantress can be discarded to search a Right, so either of those in your starting hand allows you to use the whole engine. Once you use Fateful Adventure to search Griffin, it will be able to summon itself since you control the token. With it on the field and a token, you've got yourself an Omni Negate, so you can just go ahead with any of the other plays that you want. But also, the summon of the Griffin gets you a Dragon Equip spell, which you can just go ahead and discard as a Witchcrafter, since it will go and equip itself straight away from the graveyard. And so that's the package. So what does it look like when you put them together? Let's have a look. So here's the deck. First let's start off with the Adventurer package. 3 Enchantress of the Temple and 1 Wandering Gryphon Rider, and then 3 Rite of Aramesir, 2 Fateful Adventure and 1 Dracoback, the Rideable Dragon. I've mostly explained their use in the first part of the video, but I want to mention here that Fateful Adventure is at 2 just so that you don't lose out on a card advantage from already having drawn it. In most decks you probably wouldn't bother, but here it's good to have the extra spell just in case you need to discard it. Now for the Witchcrafters. You run 1 Oriri, 1 Vech, and 1 Heine, and then 3 Shmieta, 2 Pitar, and 3 Jenny. Vech is usually the one you want to end on, while Oriri is best in your hand. Heine is a good backup option for if you can't get to Vech, but also good if you have a strong hand and can summon both of their boss monsters. She's not the top priority though, unless you're against something that folds to a well-timed destruction. For the small witchcrafters, you might be thinking that it's a lot of them, but you really do want to be able to end on one of them, otherwise you just won't really be doing anything. Something else to remember is that, as part of the adventurer line, you'll be discarding a card, so it's easy to discard one of the small witchcrafters to get their graveyard effects. 
Jenny and Schmietta are the best effects to get, so if you wanted to cut one of them down it could be Peter, especially since it doesn't actually work if you've used Extravagance. However, she's fine to use as your normal summon after the token, since you'll be able to save her draw until turn 3. But their spells and traps run 3 Creation, 3 Holiday and 2 Unveiling, and then 1 by Street and 1 Patronus. Creation will search either a small witchcrafter if you don't have one, or otherwise an Aruru so that it's ready to go in your hand. Sometimes searching Haina or Vech is actually an option if you've made a Selene, since she can summon them straight from your hand. Holiday can be good for bypassing the token preventing your normal summons from using their effects by making a Link 1 first and then bringing them back. Otherwise just use it on Vech or Haina. Unveiling can also get around that restriction, while also protecting you from Ash Blossom. You can run a third of this in one less holiday if you prefer. Finally, Bystreet offers great protection to Ver, and Patronus can recover cards that you've banished with Jenny, or just be a good resource generator if you happen to draw it. It could also be good at 3, but you risk not having enough spells in your opening hand if you do. For supporting spells, you really want to keep up your card advantage, which is the main purpose of these. Extravagance is a plus 1 without too much cost since this deck really doesn't care much for its extra deck. Metal Phase Fusion is also a good discard, being a draw that you can use later on. And then there's Magician's Rest Stage, which can be a good revival card for Jenny or Peter, or a discard that will search Magician's right or left hand, which negate a spell or a trap each turn. Like I mentioned before, the extra deck isn't too important, and is mostly just full of self-explanatory staples. Relinquished and Artemis help you link away your low levels, either to get them into the graveyard to use their graveyard effects, or then to summon them back as Witchcraft the Holiday. The Charmers can help you link up into Selene, who in turn can either summon back your Witchcraft the boss monsters, or help you make an access code. Feel free to also throw in some anti-dogmatica cards like Elder Entity and Tiss in your extra deck, just in case you end up fighting them. So now it's time to see them in action! But first, if you've been enjoying the videos so far, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel! Anyway, to start us off, here's what you'll need to perform your basic combo. Any low level Witchcrafter, Water Enchantress or Rite of Aramisir, and then any spell that will either be able to recycle itself or give you another spell in exchange. Enchantress discards itself to search right, which creates an adventurer token and also gives you a Fateful Journey. Fateful Journey can then search a Gryphon before discarding a card, and this is when you can get rid of your spell. You can now summon Gryphon, which will search the equip spell. You're now protected from a hand trap, so it's safe to summon Schmietta. However, with just this hand you won't actually be able to use her effect, but having her on the field is important just so that you can add back your Witchcrafter spell in your end phase. Now during your opponent's turn, you can discard the equip spell with Schmietta to summon a Vech, which will then equip to your token, giving you protection thanks to Fateful Journey. You now have Vech's Blanket Negate, Griffin's Omni Negate, and then some protection for your Brave token. However, that's just the most basic combo you'll be doing, but with a full hand you can make much better boards. Here you start with Enchantress, doing the same combo as last time, but discarding a Rest Stage in order to maintain hand size. Once you're protected from Ash Blossom, you're free to search Aruru as creation, before playing a right hand and passing your turn. You now have the same board as the first combo, with the addition of a spell negate from right hand and an extra bounce from Aruru. This test hand shows the advantages and disadvantages of using Unveiling to summon a Schmietta. Already you're protected from Ash Blossom, so you could just go ahead with it, but you also have right, so there's still some advantages to using it. After summoning a Gryphon, you'll be given an extra equip card to discard it. Since Schmietta was special summoned, you can use her, and then use the equip as a cost, to get your Vech. Since you got her into the graveyard instead of waiting an extra turn, while you did have to lose a spell to summon her, you also get to banish her to send whatever spell you want, which helps you set up for turn 3. Finally, here's an alternative line of play you can take thanks to the Taken package. Extravagance draws you right, which you can then use to go through the regular line of play discarding a creation. After summoning Gryphon and searching the equip spell, you can play right hand and then normal summon a Schmietta, before using creation to search Vech. However, instead of ending your turn, 
You can make a Selene who gains 6 spell counters, which is enough for 2 summons. You can remove 3 to summon a Ver, and then use Schmieter to send a Jenny who banishes herself to search a creation which searches Heine. Now on your opponent's turn, you can summon Heine, giving you targeting protection for Ver, and also the choice of either a Blanket Negate or a Card Destruction, all while having a Ruru in your hand and the right hand to negate a spell. So that's the deck! Will you be picking up this engine for your Witchcrafter deck? Or is it just too pricey to be worth it? Tell me down in the comments below, and while you're there, make sure to give the video a like and to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching!